Another guest on the album um, was uh, Stina Nordenstam. Another huge favorite of ours, yeah. Yeah, and another kind of random story. Like, I think that we had fantasized about having her on an album since mm. we heard her album and she closed her eyes. How did you come upon her material? Because I think it was you who sort of introduced um, the rest of us to her. Yeah. I think I think uh, MTV. Yeah, I think it was MTV Two or something like that. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, then later on, uh, she was she had a few songs on that uh, Romeo and Juliet song, like the Buzz Luhrmann. Yeah, that was her big breakthrough kind of. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I I remember buying that album uh, and just being in love with it. Like yeah. you know, when you f get a new album and you just fall in love, you listen to nothing else for mm. months. You know. Mm. That's how I felt with that. It's not like nothing I ever heard before or since. No. Um, <clears throat> but we had no idea how to reach her. She's quite, she's quite, you know, she's hard to get in touch with. Uh, but uh, as fate would have it, the engineer at the studio we were in at the time in Denmark, Dang. Sweet Silence, mm -hmm. um, he was uh, dating her at the time. And again, like with Becky Jarrett on Symmetry, this is just so random yeah, when you yeah. think about it. You know, she's from Sweden, mm. we're in Denmark, two separate countries, that the guy who works at the studio happens to date her is just mm. like one in a trazillion, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so, yeah. So again, I guess yeah, it felt like it was meant to be almost, but, uh, you know, as the story goes, it was we weren't quite sure whether she would actually want mm. to because the song her voice is beyond her years is quite a rocky track or sort yeah. of like a sort of a little industrial kind of sinister sounding thing and mm. uh, and we weren't really sure whether it was going to be too sort of macho or or, or too sort of rock for her mm. or mm. so we were quite anxious about whether she actually would want to participate I remember feeling so anxious about jinxing the whole thing yeah. that I, which I regret now, I actually left when she was about to do her vocals because just, it was so delicate. The yeah. whole situation was just sort of like... You were afraid to... Yeah, I just, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have heard that I was there, but it just felt like she was the kind of artist that she needed her space and she yeah. just needed to be left to do her thing. Yeah. And that was the best thing you could do was just sort of get out of her way, kind of. Um, and you were there, I guess. So, mm. so you can maybe tell me about how yeah, it this, went down. She was amazing. She did her takes in. Uh, I think it was like, like one take, uh, pretty much. She's the kind of vocalist that, as soon as she sort of opens her mouth, it just sounds exactly like her. Yeah. She has like such a a signature sound to her vocal that I'm not surprised that she did it quickly because. She has a background in in jazz, and, and oh. you can I think you can tell like she's almost she almost has a bit of that Chet Baker singing Funny Valentine that like super super soft mm -hmm. and uh, and and just so soulful. But but then she made it completely her own thing coming out of that jazz background. She, she, it's not like jazz what she does now. No, but. Uh, Definitely. Her early stuff actually had a little bit of jazzy yeah. chords and oh yeah and, and um, instrumentation as yeah well. yeah exactly yeah. but in in a totally different way and um, but I think that is beautiful uh, like it's she's she's just amazing you know she's, yes she's incredible yeah we've been fortunate over the years to actually have some pretty crazy amazing people yeah. featuring on our records absolutely.